I'm going to kit bash and paint an Iron Warriors battle servitor. I just changed my whole recording setup with new cameras, lights and everything. And so there's still some uh, adjustments here and there. But you know what could really help when you record a video? A working microphone. Yeah, <laughs> but don't worry. There will be more recording mistakes in this video. <laughs> it gets worse. And it's a very simple kit bash, really nothing special. I'm using the cutter from Breachers, which are cutter from Battle Servitors from the Adeptus Mechanicus. I'm just going to replace the gun for a weapon from the Terminator kit, the Chaos Terminator kit, of course. I'm using the mole. If you have Terminators, you probably have a couple of weapons left over, like sword, lightning claws, pick whichever you like. Uh, I think they're a good fit. I think they're big, bulky, they fit the servitor well. There's just this nub you have to get rid of first. And then you can proxy it as a Chaos Spawn. If you've seen my video from last week about the best kits, bits and proxies for Iron Warriors, I mentioned this as a good proxy for Chaos Spawn, because I think Iron Warriors would rather shoot the spawn than let it go in battle with them. They're not really into the whole Chaos Mutation thing. Servitors, though, are really something for the Iron Warriors. That's why this. But I have to do a little work first. I have to scrape off the Adeptus Mechanicus icons, because it's not a Dark Mechanicus or Adeptus Mechanicus Servitor. It's an Iron Warriors Servitor. So there are a couple of icons to scrape off. There's one on the backpack, on the chest piece, and these here on the side. But the first thing I do is put a band-aid on my thumb. I, I made this video about kid bashing Tagurius, getting infected by the Leviathan hive mind. They made a joke about scraping mold lines and so on again, you cut. But this is a brand new blade. If I didn't have this thumb, this band-aid on my thumb, I could not do this. This is applying proper pressure. There's nothing cutting in here. Put this on as little protection and you won't need band-aids after you finish scraping. Because now there's no problem with moving the blade towards you and scraping off these bits and pieces. And if you slip, well, you slip onto the band-aid, there's really nothing gonna happen. So, little tip from an experienced kit bash. I have the scars on my thumb to show you that this really is a bit of value. <laughs> so the icons are scraped clean, got some nice smooth surfaces now for uh, putting decals on later on. Uh, there's just these two pieces here that are protective armor plates and I want to remove this little icon over there. It's a bit too decorative for Iron Warriors in my opinion. And then we come to this little stub here on his arm. And I got my saw here and I'm just going to saw it off. There is actually a little ridge over here that I'm going to use as a guide. And I just saw through the whole thing from both sides. And that should give me enough to work with. So there it's gone. Where is my arm? There it is. Now I could, let's point this at the camera so you guys can see it as well. I could just glue this on, but I think it would look better if that last bit also was scraped off. So I'm just going to use the knife. Band-Aid is still there. Let's keep going. And with that, all the hacking and sawing is done. Uh, I scraped off quite a bit more, but I think like this, the arm will be a good fit. And you still get to see some of that cog behind it. I think it will look cool, it'll look more mechanical. Um, time to just glue everything together, spray it, and then we're going to start painting. And we're going straight from a base coat of black to silver. There goes the brush. And I'm using here a number five dry brush from Green Stuff World. And I'm using Mithril Blade from Duncan Rhodes' uh, Paint Academy. But you could just use Stormo Silver from Games Workshop instead. It's all silver. And I'm doing a pretty rough dry brush, which means I don't just want to hit the upper ridges and edges. I actually want to have some of the silver go a bit deeper as well. That's also why I'm using this round brush instead of a flat dry brush. And why would you go for silver straight on black instead of picking Iron Warriors, one of the darker metals? Well, because I want this as bright as possible, because then I can grime it up much better, much more. I'm going to add a bunch of rust and dirt and all that stuff and that just looks better on a brighter base layer. If I would start with a dark metallic color, then you can't really add dark grime anymore, can you? You just won't see it. And when I'm doing this, the silver, I'm hitting parts that I don't want to have silver, like the skin over here. Doesn't matter, we paint over it later. Uh, this way you can just speed up the dry brushing and then you can do the detail work later on with a bit more detail and a bit more patience. 
Now I did a little painting in the meantime, but I wasn't happy with it, so I just cut that footage. But I washed him in ethermatic blue, very light blue contrast papers. I want the steel to look nice and blue, because then the other stuff, the oranges and the yellows, the hazard stripes, they contrast much better. But I'm not happy with the results, so instead I just cut the footage and I'm going for Dragonov Nightshade all over the model. And this is a dark blue, and I'm going for this one instead because it's just more visible. And I want this to go into the recesses and will make the, the shadows on the mini much darker, but still kind of blue, not so black. And after this, it has dried. We quickly dry brush it with some silver again, just the same silver, but much lighter. I'm using this uh, flat dry brush instead of the round one, because I don't want to hit the recesses. I really want to, only want to hit the uh, ridges. And I will take the blue off there and leave the blue into the recesses in the shadows. And that's the result I'm going for. And then after this dry brush is done, we're done with all the rough work. So it's time for decals. And I think decals are important, especially if you kit bashing, because if you go with a model like this, that is really recognizable from the AdMac army, putting a couple of decals on there really makes it your own. And I'm using decals so early in the process because I want to weather them down, just like I'm going to weather the rest of the model. And if you add them too late, you have this beautifully pristine decal on the miniature and the rest around it is weathered. And already this is an issue with decals. Look at this, you know, the metal around it is rough. It is streaky, grimy already just to the dry brushing and the washing. And then the decal comes on there, bright silver. We'll, we'll work on that. We're going to weather the decals, distress them a little bit, make them look a little bit more worn. And you, you really, decals aren't hard to use, guys. Use one of these things that I have here. It's called Micro Sol or Micro Set. It's a decal softener that's used in the model building industry. So it's not really something you find at the Games Workshop store. But if you go online and any hobby model, hobby store where they build amazing tanks and planes, highly realistic, that's where you get this stuff from. And uh, I think it's essential if you want to use decals. Look how easy it is to just get this into place and it will soften it. It will make it bend to the shape if it's a little bit curved, like a Space Marine shoulder pad. And it's really easy to use. It's kind of like a glue. And I'm just gonna, here I'm following the uh, AdMac example of where they had their AdMac markings that I scraped off earlier. That's where I add the Iron Warriors icons. And of course, I'm gonna make it more Iron Warriors with hazard stripes and so on. But this is a good start. Now, weathering decals, you have two options. One is to take the base layer paint that's underneath the decal, stipple it on with a little bit of a sponge, or take a sharp blade and scratch off a little bit. Now, in my case, the scratching off option is really the only option I have, because there is no smooth base paint. If you're painting more like a heavy metal style, a neat, clean surface, stippling on with the base paint is an option, but not if it's this rough looking. So I just take a sharp blade and I start scratching off parts of the decal. And I'm just starting here on the edges and let's just scratch a little bit out of here and a little bit on this side. And so bit by bit, I scratch off parts of these decals and weather them a little bit. Then after that, when I weather the rest of the mini with grime, rust and so on and so forth, it goes on to these decals as well and they all blend into the mini a bit more because they, they stand out like a sore thumb as usual with decals. They're too bright and too neat and too perfect. Uh, the edges are too perfect for my style of painting. Time for hazard stripes, something Iron Warriors are known for. And I'm taking some Jokero orange and not yellow because yellow doesn't cover very well. So it's good to have a base layer of a different paint first that comes close enough like an orange or even a red, people use pink as well. And that, that covers. And then after that, flash gets yellow. And this is a super bright yellow paint. So you probably still need a couple of layers to cover over the Jokero orange. It's just, that's just the nature of painting yellow. It's never gonna cover great. So a couple of layers is gonna be necessary. And then once the flash gets yellow is applied, we're gonna add some contrast Yanden yellow. And this is a little bit orange, but once it dries, it'll stay orange in the recesses and become yellow on the surface. And that way we can give this a little bit of shading. And uh, you'll need that because you want that shading in the recesses of the armor trim. And uh, after this, then we're gonna go work on the actual black parts. But 
I wanted to mention that last week's video was all about the best Iron Warriors kits, bits, and proxies that you can find on the Games Workshop website. So if you're into Iron Warriors, maybe you should go and watch that one next as well. And in that video, I show off this miniature as a proxy for, for beasts, so for Chaos Spawns. And it uh, you know, would be nice, it fits exactly on that base. And there's, but there's a lot more suggestions in that video as well, and miniatures that I go through, kits that you can use to make your Iron Warriors look more like Iron Warriors. Now we continue with the Hazard Stripes, and next up is Corvus Black, which is kind of a slightly lighter black than Abaddon Black. But I'm using Death Reaper from the Two Thin Coats line, because I don't have Corvus Black and I do have this one. Now the reason I'm not using a perfect black like uh, Abaddon Black is because it's not really how black paint looks. If you look at, for example, the microphone here or black stuff there in the background, most of it is not exactly black. It's slightly lighter than black, and that's just how colors work. Now, another thing, hazard stripes. I am not using an airbrush, I'm not using tape, I'm not using a pencil to sketch in the lines. A little tip on drawing straight lines. Don't use your fingers like this, don't use your wrist like that to draw a line. Try to draw a line with your whole arm. The movement comes basically from my shoulder, or from my elbow if I go horizontally and that way you can draw not perfect but pretty straight lines uh, on these little, little surfaces it's hard you're, you're inclined to just use your fingers or just your wrist try to just put down the brush in one point and then drag your whole arm like that and like this it looks rough but it is the start so you can now try to get the other side there you go try to color this in and make it look like a nice black hazard stripe. And of course, this is not the only thing we're doing. We're gonna make these stripes look rougher. And because of that, it doesn't really matter if you have a bit of a squiggly line. So try to get these lines straight, as straight as you can. And then we roughen them up. So take a look at how poorly drawn these lines are. As you can see, they're not particularly even. They're not the same thickness, same over here, same over there. You can get better results if you leave all these parts off, paint them separately so you don't have to get the brush in there. But I'm going to show you why this doesn't really matter. Because we're going to roughen up these lines and we're going to make them look even or look like they were even at some point and now they're just roughed up and damaged. And that's why you have these uneven lines everywhere. But I just got a little bit of kitchen sponge and I tear off a little bit. This is one you can buy that in the supermarket and uh, just tear off a little part and I'm going to use these tweezers because otherwise I'm blocking the camera with my fingers you can't see what I'm doing but I'm just dipping this in the same black that I had before the Corvus black and then I'm going to put this on a piece of paper until I get a satisfying little stipple pattern so something like this now now I'm getting a nice pattern here and so I'm going to use that to stipple on to the yellow to make it look as if it is worn off a little bit and I'm just trying to hit the black line and as you can see it spills over into the yellow and this way if you go all around and you can make a smaller sponge if you want more control but I'm just moving fast here imagine I'm painting the whole Iron Warriors army and this way the lines get a little bit of damage the, the yellow is scraped off so to say and reveals the black on the line of the coat. So with that done I'll show you what I mean it doesn't look perfect, but it looks good enough from a distance. Looking from the top camera down, zoomed in, you can see that it's not great. But looking at it from a meter away from that camera, this looks like a proper Iron Warriors model, right? You don't really see that the lines aren't even or that there's paint in the wrong places. And that's what we're painting for here, for the tabletop. To make your army on the tabletop look cool when you're playing, not necessarily display models. Now there's a bunch of little hoses and pipes and so on on the miniature that I want to have black. And I'm going to use Contrast Black, Tem black Legion, Legion, not Black Templars, uh, for this to cover it up. So that's the tracks, for example. I want them to just be black before I start weathering uh, them and adding uh, dirt and so on. Just to make sure that there's no silver over here. So this is the moment really that we're going to clean up all the bits that we hit with silver that we want to have black. And another one are things like the hoses over here and on the, on the top of the mini. They all get a layer of this black legion paint just to make them black. Didn't I tell you things were going to get worse? Well, right around now, my top-down camera shuts off because it's not plugged in properly and the battery is empty. So the next few steps, after that I realize it, but the next few steps you're gonna have to watch me paint like this 
looking at the top of my head instead. So maybe we can discover a few new bald spots together. And we continue with applying more paints in places to cover the silver that we dry brushed so roughly before. And at the same time, it's gonna add a little bit more interest to the mini. So now we've got Runeward Brass for all of the armor trim. And this is especially important, of course, around your hatchet stripes. But there are a few more places around the mini where I can use this. For example, there's these hoses, these pipes over here. And keeping them all silver is an option. That's definitely an option. You can do that if you like. It saves you a lot of time. But I want to have a little bit more interesting details around this miniature, like this claw. There might be some brass pieces in there. Definitely the backpack. And then after that, we'll go and look where we can add some rust to give it a bit more warm feel as well. So now he looks really like an Iron Warrior. The armor trim really finishes the whole Iron Warrior look. And you can now also see how good it is to wash the steel with the blue, because the blue is starting to shine more. It's kind of starting to pop more because of the armor trim, because of the warm yellow stripes. You get that contrast in there. If you don't wash the steel with blue first, it will look much more flat and much less interesting. Now I'm going to keep going uh, with the skin because uh, serve the skin, of course, it needs to also stand out. I don't want this to look like just a bot or an automata. It needs to be a living, well, kind of living thing. And I'm using Rock Art Flesh for this. That's the absolute perfect skin tone for any servitor skin, I would say. Anything that you want to look like it's not doing really well. It doesn't get to see the sun that much. It doesn't have that great blood flow either. Rock Art Flesh is the way to go. But of course, we need some shading and highlighting. So when this is dry, give it a wash of Agrax Earth Shade just to get the shading in that uh, recesses of his eye and around the metal that is strapped to his face. And don't overdo it. Keep it pretty light, because otherwise it just becomes very, very dark. And then when the Agrax Earth Shade is completely dry, just highlight the top of his head with some Rock Art Flesh again. Um, just make sure you don't get into the recesses, and this will look fine enough from a distance. You don't have to be perfect at highlighting, you don't have to be super accurate. Just make sure you don't hit the uh, ridges where the metal meets the skin, because that's what the Agrax Earth Shade now is. And make sure you just hit the top of the face. That's Good enough, guys. I'm just quickly gonna do the power mold before we get to the rust and the grime. And I've painted power weapons on camera before in different colors. And for this one, I am going for an orange power weapon. I think it will look good with the blue steel that he has, and it will go well with the yellow, orangey hazard stripes. So, first, uh, some grays here because I want this to have a white base coat for some contrast paint and white doesn't cover, so much like the yellow, we're using a different paint first. And the gray sear is pretty much the whitest gray that you can get that still covers reasonably well. So we do one rough layer of this, a quick layer of pure white, and then after that, a layer of contrast magma droth flame all over it. And this needs to be sharpened to make it look like it's glowing. So for that, Dry brush the edges with the same Flash Kids yellow that I used for the hazard stripes. You can use a different yellow, you can use bone as well. But I like to use as few paints as possible whenever I'm painting. So if I've already used some yellow somewhere, I'm gonna just reuse the same color. And this yellow isn't enough to make it really, really glowing. So I'm gonna dry brush this now with just a little bit of white and only on the real edges of this mix. Now there's these sharp ridges. I'm gonna hit that with white to make them look as if they're glowing white hot. And now we're gonna do some rust and some weathering. And we're gonna start with some typhus corrosion. And the most obvious place to start is these exhausts. And I'm just gonna apply a bit of typhus corrosion both on these exhaust pipes, but also on the shield that is covering them. Usually this heat shield is meant to be there to actually stop the corrosion. But my little battle servitor has been in combat so long and he has seen so little maintenance that even that part is rusting out. Now it's, it's a good idea to think about what you want to have rusted and what not. And this is all pre personal preference. You can make it as rusty and nasty as you want, but we're not painting Death Guard here. So I'm gonna keep it fairly limited. But I think this is one of the parts of a vehicle that you put in combat that doesn't really need replacement as long as it's functioning. Right? This is the grim darkness of the far future where there are no resources to keep everything running perfectly. So priorities have to be made. And if an exhaust gets rusted or damaged, but it's still an exhaust, 
then why would you replace it? That's just a waste of material. So likewise, I'm gonna go around the model and just look for little bits and pieces that could be rusted a bit more. Like here, these hinges. Let's add a little bit of rust around there. And that way it shows that these hinges are kind of rusted shut. It's where metal moves, where metal rubs up against each other. That's where you'll find rust uh, in the creating and starting. And so go over, over all the model. Let's put some over here as well on the front in the recesses, why not? Let some rust accumulate in places where plates scrape against each other. Here's another good spot where that armor plate from the shoulder comes there to the chest. And somewhere here around this little claw might be a good place too. And keep going, just keep going around the model, add rust where you like. Uh, we'll continue when I finish with my types corrosion. And then when the types corrosion is dry, just dry brush with a little bit of riser rust. Now this is the most basic form of painting rust. I have a video on my channel where I paint this plate burst crawler, where I go into much more detail with all kinds of paints, enamels and so on, rust deposits, rust streaks and so on and so on. But I figured for this video, let's keep it simple. And just a little bit of typhus corrosion with riser rust will get you a very good, very basic uh, rust effect. That will look great from a meter away, really. If you're painting for the tabletop, all the other intricate ways of painting rust, it's cool, you get great effects, but it's not really necessary. So with the riser rust, uh, you also don't really have to be that accurate, just hit the regions where you have types corrosion it's fine if you hit the steel with this orange it just looks like the the rust is organically growing a little bit and it doesn't have to be so accurate now the rust is pretty much done like i said yes you can have better rust but this is fast and quick and gives you good results without any any special paints like enamel paints i'm just going to do the base first before adding more dust and dirt to the mini because then i can uh, sort of unify the base and the miniature and make it look like the dust on the Mini is actually from the base that he is riding around on. Uh, so I'm using Armageddon dust here, and it's a bit of a light base. You could also go for Martian soil, both of them work really well with Iron Warriors, but I would take a pretty colorful, a pretty bright base, uh, because if you do something dark, black, or snowy or so, I think it will not blend so well with the Mini, or actually it will blend too well with the Mini doesn't really set the mini apart from the base. So bright colors for the base, it's a good idea. Boy, I think it's time to go. I have to take a break. <laughs> My dogs are demanding a, a walk. And now I'm gonna wash the base with some Agrax Earthshade. The same shade we used for the skin of the servitor before. And that's why I'm using Agrax Earthshade with the same idea. I use as little paint as possible for this video. So you don't have to go out and buy 50 paints just to try and mimic one paint scheme. Instead of Agrax Earthshade, you could also use Reikland Flesh Shade, which looks really cool if you want something that looks a little bit more red. Uh, that's what I do for my Death Guard army. So if you want to see that, check out that uh, Plate Burst Crawler video I mentioned earlier, because there I'm also painting tank tracks like this. Now, I'm going to keep going with a couple more acrylics, a little bit of dry brushing is coming. And then I'm going to take this a little bit further because I have people in the comments saying they want simple videos that are easy to replicate with just basic paints and basic techniques and people want something more advanced as well. So why not just do both? So up till now, all I've used is just Games Workshop paints and basic acrylic paints, some from Duncan Rose's Paint Academy. And after this, I'll start using some enamels. We'll start doing some priming and some more rusting and make it look a little more grim dark, but with more advanced techniques and more advanced paints. And if you've liked the video so far, how about giving it a little thumbs up? That would help me out tremendously. So after the Agrax Earth Shade is done, just dry brush it a little bit with some Zandri Dust, because Zandri Dust is the same color as the uh, Armageddon Dirt, the Armageddon Dust that we used before, the texture paste. And so dry brushing it again will just give it a little bit of a highlight. But this is also the moment to add some more dust to the miniature itself. So look at this plate for, here, for example here. Uh, I'm just gonna dry brush up a little bit of this sandry dust to make it look as if dust has been kicked up onto this plate here. And now you really get to see the effect of the Dragon of Nightshade on the silver. The blue of the silver really contrasts well with the rust that's all around it. And you, it sometimes happens with miniature painting. You do something, you don't know what the effect is going to be, 
but this is why looking at these videos is a good idea. Use these for your own inspiration. Now you know that if you are going to work with warmer colors later on, that making your steel uh, look a bit bluish is going to lead to great contrast on your miniature. It's just going to give a great effect all around. So I'm just going to finish dry brushing this and then it's time for some enamel paints. Because if you're comfortable with painting like this with acrylics, I think the next step in your development should be enamel paints. This is a personal opinion. There's plenty of people that would disagree, but I would say start with rust streaks and streaking grime. These are sort of basic enamel paints with which you can do a lot of different stuff. You don't need to buy a lot of different enamels and you can get in some nice effects. And I'll first show you rust streaks and then streaking grime. Now enamel paints, they are just like any other paints, you need something to thin them down with acrylics, like the Games Workshop paints. You thin those down with water and enamel paints are thinned down with white spirits. And you can get white spirits from the AK website as well, where you buy these paints or you get white spirits from a hobby shop or something like that. Uh, I got this brand over here, Talens. Maybe you can pick it up at your local hobby shop. This is from like the local paint shop that has this stuff. Now what we do with this is we get a very fine brush and we just add a little bit of the rust streaks to the tip of the brush, a little bit of white spirits to water it down and we go look for a nice spot for a rust streak. So let's say over here, let's draw some rust streaks underneath it and then we draw a vertical streak. And this one looks pretty good. It's not perfectly sharp at the tip, so I'm washing out my brush here in the white spirits, clean it off, get some white spirits into the brush, and then we're gonna sharpen this point of this rust streak. And that way you'll get a nice looking sharpened rust streak. And that's it, and you can do this as much as you want. You can, if you have a whole tank, you can go to every bolt and everywhere, get these rust streaks. I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. In the places where we had typhus corrosion, I'm just gonna add a little bit of rust streaking down and do pretty quick effects everywhere because I don't want to spend too much time on such a small model. And I want to get to the streaking grime because that's really cool paint to work with as well. And now it's time for streaking grime. And this is often called grim dark in a pot. And it is pretty accurate description. You just take some of the streaking grime and I take some white spirits to water it down. And I got a slightly larger brush here. And first of all, I'm going to go over all the tank tracks and the base as well. And this is to make it all one color and will make it all look much more dusty and dirty. But I'm also going to kind of wash the lower part of the model and just go over all of it with the streaking grime and let it pull into the recesses, get, let it settle into these ridges. And after that, when it's dry, we have to reduce the streaking grime, which means we take a brush. In this case, I got a fairly small brush. I load it with white spirits and I just rub off the streaking grime from the higher lying points. So the ridges, the highlights, I get the streaking grime off and I sort of push it into the recesses. And that's the beauty of these enamel paints. They reactivate when you use white spirits. Unlike acrylics, acrylics just become a plastic layer on your mini. These uh, enamels, they reactivate when you use white spirits on them. So you can sculpt them afterwards and push them into the recesses and get better effects if you like. Now this is a pretty time consuming process. You can also just make a wash of the sweet and grime with white spirits, kind of 50-50 white spirits, sweet and grime, or you use a Q-tip loaded with uh, uh, white spirits and you just rub off wherever you want. But I kind of like this method to actually best to do it is when the sweet and grime isn't completely dry yet because it tends more malleable. But this way you get a good effect of the grime settling into recesses. And that's the kit bash finished. It's a really simple and easy kit bash. The Admac Breacher kit with just one arm from the Terminators. Nothing special about it. Kit bashing doesn't have to be something extreme with loads of different bits and pieces and green stuff sculpting and so on and so forth. You can make a very flavorful proxy or flavorful kit bash with just a few bits and pieces. Now the paint scheme is simple. But the main things are get your steel to look a bit blue so that all the other warm accents pop more and at the same time your steel pops more. Start very bright and then dirtin it down because that keeps it easy for you. You don't have to highlight much after that. And you can just do the acrylics first and when you're more comfortable start working with these enamels. I'd really recommend your next step in your painting journey to be enamels. Now finally, I'd love to give special thanks to Nuno for selling me his garbage. I mean, graciously, generously letting me have his leftover sprue because that helps me make these kit bash videos. 
and maybe check out this video next.